So, welcome everyone to this uh, talk about anonymous analytics. Uh, I'm trying to uh, give you a, like, a quick introduction on, on what, what actually you can do with it. Very, very quickly how to do it, but as we only have like a limit, very limited time, so we should just get started. Uh, first things first. My name, Tatu Kallonen. Hello, everyone. Uh, I've been working as a senior web analyst at Evermade for three years, working alongside web developers and designers. It has been very, very rewarding. Uh, before that, I have uh, about 10 years of experience in the web analytics field, and I have been working with the uh, like, biggest companies in, in Finland that provide like e-commerce, gaming, media, all that stuff. Um, so, next we're gonna go through very quickly this, uh, why, sh why you should do it, how you should do it, and what do you do with it. So, anonymous analytics in three questions. First things first, why? Why should you be interested? Well, probably most of you have at least heard about this GDPR thing. Um, which means that, well, we have those irritating cookie banners on our sites blocking our, well, tracking and just annoying our uh, web, uh, web using experience. Um, in, in our experience, um, in most cases, it's around somewhere like 50 or 60 percent that like uh, consent to cookies or, like, uh, or don't consent to cookies. It's somewhere there in the middle. But depending on the site, it could reach up to or even above 80% of users who don't give you permission to like use cookies or do any kind of tracking based on them. So this means that you're gonna you're gonna try to use data to develop your site further, but you only have like 20% of your whole user base to like learn from and to see like what do they what do they do this this can cause like a lot of headaches and like you might even do like bad decisions based on that data because it's not it's not representative of your whole whole site also if we just scrape away the user data there it's still very useful and high quality data we still see like a lot of things from that. So how to do it? Sadly, I'm not going to teach you <laughs> like today how to do it. This is a very quick slide and uh, there are many ways of doing it, but this is my like uh, recommendation if you just want to have some kind of implementation. So Pivik Pro, if you don't know, is an analytics tool, uh, very similar to Google Analytics older version. Uh, it's, uh, it offers a free, uh, uh, it, well, it is free, it has a free subscription for up to 500,000 hits per month. Uh, in Finland, most of the sites can actually like fit inside that free bracket. So there's basically no, no real reason why not to like use this. Uh, also, it offers anonymous tracking and it has a guide. For it. There's a link, you can see, but it's very small. Uh, you can find it on Google, and if, if you can't, you can just ask me about it. But yeah, uh, when we have done that implementation, uh, we have this list of things. Well, what, what do we have when we have our anonymous tracking set up? Don't pay attention to the like, X marks, because the, there's a lot of things that we don't have, and that's that's sad. But there's a few very important things that we do actually have, and we should focus on those. So we have we have uh, traffic, which means uh, all of the page views, all of our events are we're able to track those. Uh, we're able to get the traffic source, so if the user came from Facebook or Google or just directly to your site. And uh, with some limitation, we can get actually the user location as well. 
uh, you can you can specify that yourself how how accurately you want to have that data available and the at the bottom part of this is the main thing here this implementation is gdpr compliant so we're all good we can actually use this so um, i'm going to show you uh, some data uh, from our uh, from a site called uh, finnish film uh, what's was it Finnish Film Foundation, so SES.fi, which uses this kind of tracking. First thing that you always encounter in, when you look at your site's data is visitors and sessions, so sometimes it's users and sessions. Sadly, these numbers we're not really gonna get, because every hit that arrives to our analytics is considered a new user, a new session. So. This can kind of show you how how much traffic or how much like engagement there is on your site, but nothing more. Uh, you can see spikes, but don't pay attention to those because it's it's just misleading. Whereas, as you might see the bottom part of the graph, there's page views. Page views we can get. We actually get all of the information that is sent through page views. We see which pages are, like, whenever a page is opened, we see that page, uh, like, metric go off. Um, we won't be able to see uh, engagement metrics. So when we're talking about, uh, like, uh, bounce rates, exit rates, or average time used on a page, we can't get those because uh, we don't, we're not able to tie it to the same session. But we still can see what pages are read, what, what content is interesting to the client, what isn't. So we can make decisions based on that. We can prioritize how we develop our site based on that. Events. So basically our best friend in this case. Uh, events can be like whatever interactions you have on your site. Uh, for example, here we have uh, like JavaScript errors is one event. Whenever that happens, we see an event come up to our uh, analytics. If we would only use the like data from consenting users, we would only have like that maybe 20% of uh, cases, and that would hide a lot of possible JavaScript errors. Uh, we can also have heat maps. Pivot Pro offers heat map tracking, but that's going to be, uh, well, it's going to be a, its own whole thing. But you can do that as well. When it comes to user journey, so how people navigate through your site, we can use events for that. Uh, if we use internal link clicks, so whenever we recognize someone has clicked a link that's, well, internal, we can track an event on that page, someone clicked on a link directing to this page. Now we can see how users are... Oh, my headset's falling. Hopefully it's fine. Uh, we can see like how, how users are navigating through our site. Even though we can't focus on one single user, we can still see the general user journey. Traffic sources. This is uh, kind of interesting in a way that uh, you can you can see like uh, individual traffic sources very well if you see like how many uh, sessions you got from google organic that's very close to the actual actual number that you would get in your usual analytics um, you're gonna get a lot of direct traffic that's just because direct traffic means that we haven't recognized any uh, any other traffic source and uh, to get your internal internal uh, uh, sources, so which you can see there, uh, www.ss.fi, you actually can input the wrong uh, website address in your settings. So the actual site is uh, www.ses.fi, but we have only set up the ses.fi in the settings, so it doesn't. Uh, doesn't filter out the uh, uh, internal clicks, so you can see those as well. Goals, 
important thing about goals, you track them and uh, it's your most important events. They can happen multiple times per session. This is usually they happen only once per session, depending on the uh, analytics setup. But just keep in mind, you can only have those. Uh, well, you can have those happen multiple times. So uh, lastly, I want to leave you with this thought. So even though we are like limited with our like how much data we can have, you can still do a lot of things if. If you're skilled enough, you can do a lot of different things with the limited amount of data, because it's still good data. Uh, yeah, that's probably my time. But if you have any kind of questions, we might have like a couple of minutes. Yes, we do. We do have yeah. a couple of minutes. Excellent. Cool. I'll start with the, with, the, with the applause. Let's start first okay. with the applause. Okay.